Hello, it's Alan Arkers with a different kind of trailer from hell. Now, normally I focus on the film. This time I'm going to focus on the process of making the film because our fearless leader, Joe Dante, found something from my deepest, darkest directing past. The trailer for Blast, a movie that I directed a third of. You see, I am Frank Arthur Wilson. Now, seeing this trailer was a shock to the system, and it triggered a lot of memories. Back in 1976, uh, Joe and I and John Davison had finished Hollywood Boulevard, and Roger had liked it very, very much, and he had this newfound respect for our nascent filmmaking skills. And if it's a good picture, it's a miracle! Action! And in return for that respect, he worked us night and day. We were cutting trailers and TV spots for all the movies, Jackson County Jail, Eat My Dust, all the negative pickups, all the foreign pictures. It was uh, basically 24 seven, and I was being paid $200 a week. Got that filmmakers of tomorrow? That works out to $2.50 an hour. Look at all the money we've earned, Unc. Ah, uh, that's what I like to see. But it's priceless. Because what Roger was teaching us was how to be complete filmmakers. We were the acolytes, and he was the master, and he was going to guide us through the 36 chambers of the cinema Shaolin. How many times have you read the sutras? Uh, uh, I came, I came out. Master, teach me Kung Fu. <laughs> Now, Roger was never one to let anything go to waste. And in his vaults, he had this movie, The Final Come Down, written and directed by Oscar Williams Jr. for about $30,000, and it had never made back its money. Roger wanted me to recut and rewrite this movie, then go out and shoot about 30 minutes of action, do all the post-production, and uh, recut a new trailer. Now, while I was doing all my other work. So you say to yourself, why all this effort for the final come down? Because one of the stars of the final come down was Billy Dee Williams. And the movie he made after the final come down was Lady Sings the Blues, and he was a big star. <laughs> so the idea was to keep every frame of Billy Dee in the film and to shoot a half hour of solid action. Uh, the problem was we couldn't get Billy D. Williams back because he's a big star and we couldn't afford him. But his co-star, Derville Martin, of Dolomite fame, was ready to go. And that bad Derville Martin as Willie Green. Now, I was a little conflicted about changing this movie. It was talky, it was angry, it was polemical, but at its heart, it had a message very much like today's Black Lives Matter. It was about black power. So I called up Oscar Williams, the writer and director, and told him what was afoot. And uh, that was a good thing because now he was able to get a check. And he was a real gentleman. And he worked with me on the outline so that the final movie would still contain his black power message. Now, the crew was going to be the old Hollywood Boulevard gang, okay? Uh, everyone was going to get a promotion. For instance, Mike Fennell, who had been the second unit assistant prop man on Hollywood Boulevard, was now first AD, production manager, and basically the line producer. He had to watch every penny of this. Now, when you work for Roger Corman on a crew, you were part of film history. You got to work with something like this camera here. Roger owned this. This was a 1948 Mitchell BNC, which means I was basically as old as this camera. Here's a shot of me on the set. I wish I had those sunglasses. There's Dervo Martin, okay? Now, uh, time to give you a little lesson on the methodology that Roger instilled in us, how to make these movies. 
call time was before dawn, so you set up the first scene in the dark. Jamie Anderson, our DP, stood out in the street when he got an f-stop reading, that's his meter, when he got an f-stop reading that would be on the film, I yelled action, and you went straight ahead doing 30, 40, 50 setups a day till Jamie looked at the meter and basically said what everyone knew, which was it's too dark to shoot. And we did that for three days. Uh, on the very first day, it was about 10 a.m., and we were ready on our third scene, but it started to rain. So we covered the equipment and kind of got some shelter. And Mike, who had to watch every penny, could just see money going down the drain, so to speak. And he was pacing back and forth. And the phone rings in this phone booth at the location we were at in Watts. And we're all ring, ring, watching this phone ring. And Mike can't take it anymore, so he answers the phone. And, Hello? It's Roger. Boys, don't stop shooting. Don't worry about mismatching. So it's a little wet. The audiences in the drive-in will not be able to tell because they'll be watching the movie through a dirty windshield. And in the downtown theaters, as you know as I do, it's going to be too dim to tell. So, good luck. What can you say to that besides action, right? So, two days later, we're on our last day, and we're shooting way up in the Hollywood Hills in the desolate part, and the most important scene in the movie, which is the final shootout. And we are desperately trying to go as fast as we can because it's late afternoon. And before we can get to the final two most important close-ups, it turns dark and we don't get them. And so uh, ends my 13th day as a professional filmmaker, okay? Did not feel good about that. And um, a week later, I have to show the film to Roger. Okay. Now, in the screening room is me and John Davison and Mike Fennell. Now, um, watching a rough cut with Roger is an amazing experience. He is the most astute filmmaker in being able to tell you what's wrong with the scene, how to fix it, but also what you did wrong when you shot the scene and how to never do that again. It's a tough audience, but it is the graduate course, okay? So the film ends, and Roger turns to me and says, Alan, I think you need to study composition a little more. You need to balance your foreground, your midground, and your background. You should study the films of David Lean, Bridge Over the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia. I'm kind of shocked, and I blurt out, but... Roger, we made this in three days. And then John says, Roger, David Lean will wait three days for the clouds to be right. Boys, it doesn't cost any more time or money to do a good composition as a bad one. Lesson learned. And then, of course, he asks, are there any more close-ups in the shootout? No, Roger, we lost the light. Well, I can tell from your footage that you were shooting too far down in the hill. You should have been up near the top of the hill. And then when it came time for those close-ups, you would have gained 45 minutes, and you should shoot them, in that case, against open sky. You have nothing to tell geography. You never have to move the camera equipment. And each actor just steps into the same mark and does the proper screen direction. Got that? Has there ever been the owner of a studio who knows more about filmmaking than Roger Corman. Now, he can sense that the weight of what we feel, it wasn't as successful as we thought it would be, but Roger turns to him and says, boys, you did a really good job. Alan, I think you should take acting lessons. You need to learn how to work better with your actors. Um, I will set you up with my old acting teacher, the method acting teacher, Jeff Corey. As a matter of fact, I'll pay for the first two months of acting lessons for you. I was, I was stunned. And of course, with Roger, here's the punchline. He says, Alan, when you're in that class, I want you to watch everyone very closely because you see 
they're all out of work and they're broke. And the best ones, well, you can hire them and they'll work for scale. That's how I found Jack Nicholson. <laughs> oh my God, don't stop now. Now, we know what happened to me, but uh, what happened to Blast? Well, about three months later, it plays in LA in East Hollywood, this really sketchy end of Hollywood, at a um, grindhouse called The World, where you got to see three movies for 99 cents. And The World had a loyal audience at that price, and it was pretty full. And about 15 minutes in, people were saying, I think I've seen this before. And they get louder and louder, and people start saying, this is a ripoff. Uh, sir, Mom, I can't believe this. I mean, than the first one. We just show these movies, madam. We don't make them. So, 83 minutes later, when the movie ends, there's only about five of us left. And uh, as I walk out through the theater, um, in the lobby, about half the audience is arguing that they want their 99 cents back. And the other half are outside telling people that it's a ripoff. Lesson learned. Sometimes, you learn about making a movie, it's like learning how to tell time by taking a clock apart, throwing away the pieces you don't want, and then putting it back together and hoping it's better than ever. So, it's time to take a look at this deep, dark, secret trailer from my past. Billy D. Williams is better than ever. Blast, in color, rated R. Watch out. Here comes the new final come down, Blast. Starring Billy D. Williams, Badder Than Ever. Bitter baby, I'm not bitter. I was bitter 350 years ago. I'm violent, you hear me? God damn it, violent! Without Billy D., we brought back the original co-star, Derville Martin, of Dolomite fame. All right, get down on the floor right now. Our story was about police brutality against black activists who armed themselves to protect their neighborhood. I love Sam Laws and Jonathan Kaplan's truck turner. He supplied us with some needed comic relief. But looking back 44 years, I see a crude effort to combine two bare bones movies shot years apart under very different conditions. We didn't have the means or time to match film stocks or lighting. In three days, we did well over 100 setups. That's 20 ex-film students shooting fight scenes, chases, and gunplay, mostly for the first or second time. For all of us, every crazed minute at a dead run took us one minute closer to becoming real filmmakers. I've long since forgotten Blast, but the directing process has become a part of me thanks to the mentorship of Roger Corman. All explosions are borrowed from other movies. Blast, it'll wipe you out. Solid, man.